to raise you, to praise your holy name, Lord. There is no one God like you. Oh, you deserve all our praise, Lord, because you are Yahweh. Yahweh, you are Yahweh. Hey, Jehovah Shammah, Adonai, we praise you. Hey, hey. Hey, come on. Hey, hey, hey. It's so good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. God, thank you, Jesus, for making it possible for us to once again come into your homes. This is the program, your favorite program, your loving program, the program that brings Christ to you alive. Watch and pray. So whilst you watch, we pray. Whilst you watch, prophecies come forth. Amen. Whilst you watch, there will be impartation. The power of God will rest upon you. Whilst you watch, you listen. Sometimes you can even put it on while you're taking care of your child, you're taking care of other things, you're doing other things, but just invite this presence. It's, it's all about presence. Now, in today's world, everybody's craving for the presence of God. Mm. Where can I get the presence of God? And I'm telling you, through this set, this, through this uh, broadcast, you can have the presence of God mm. come into your homes. Amen. Okay, John chapter 12, verse 28 says that, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people there, therefore that stood by, verse 29, and heard it, said that it thundereth. Others said, an angel spoke to them. Now, Jesus, <laughs> after praying the prayer mm. to the Father that, you know, Father, I'm, I'm about to, you know, go to the cross and full of sorrow and full of uh, uh, worry. He said, my soul was, was troubled. Was troubled, yeah. And he said, but in spite of all this, I, I still want God to be glorified. I don't want the, 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 the temptation or the trial that I'm going to endure break my relationship with God the Father. So he, he said this into the, in, in, on, in, onto the people and, and onto God. And God spoke and he said that I have both glorified your name and I will do it again. And what God was saying there is that you have already received a position, Jesus Christ. You've already be, received a position, a blessing. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to move other things. And your, your name is going to be exalted. You are going to get, get a higher raise. Mm. So, but then the people around who heard this voice were saying that, oh, I think it's the voice sounded like a thundering. Mm. 
Some people said that it was thundering. So that means they could have heard a voice like, boom, 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 and they couldn't understand what that is. Some other people to whose ears, I believe their ears are more closer to the things of God, said, mm. Mm. it sounds like a, a, some words was being yeah, spoken. An angel. an angel spoke. So it depends on where you stand with God. When God speaks, you can hear it. Mm. But people who don't have any relationship with God, even when God is speaking, sometimes they can't. Unless God blocks a lot of mm. things to make sure that the message will be delivered to you. Mm. But I'm praying that you will take a stand and have a good stand with mm. the Lord so that when God speaks, you will hear. So they said it thundereth, but God spoke to Jesus. Jesus. Verse 30. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. So here is Jesus telling the crowds that this voice came as a as a witness or as a mm. testament that God is the one who is speaking to Jesus because God all the time speaks to Jesus we know that and it is a silent talk only Jesus can hear God but this this way God did it publicly he did it out loud and he said yes I have been glorified and I will be glorified again and that is just that, that is so powerful for the people around him, even though some didn't understand what the voice was saying or, or where it came from. But there were some of them that actually knew that it was a heavenly voice, mm -hmm. but they didn't um, contribute it to God. They said it was an angel that spoke to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it was just a confirmation that Jesus hears from God, mm -hmm. that Jesus was sent by God and takes his instruction from God. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus is is crying out to to God the Father, Father, may you be glorified. Jesus is worshiping God, and here is God telling Jesus, yes, I am glorified by you just being there on earth. I am glorified. And by you, by them taking you to the cross to sacrifice, to sacrifice you, my name will be glorified again. And, you know, and by God speaking that loud, he's also encouraging Jesus. He's also strengthening Jesus because Jesus is at a point where his soul is so troubled. So here is God taking this, this radical action, just speaking out of the blue, just speaking out loud and saying, yes. What you're doing, you are glorifying me. You're on track. You're on point. You're doing the right thing. So just keep it up. And your last thing that you'll do will be the one that will even glorify me the most. Amen. That's wonderful. 31 says, and now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Now, so Jesus said that after mm -hmm. all this glorification thing that is happening, he says, and this thing is what is going to really bring the judgment of Satan. He mm. said, now is the judgment of the world. First judgment is the world. Because, you see, without Jesus coming to the earth, there, could have, there couldn't have been no judgment. The judgment that is going to come to humanity is going to be when Jesus came and died, what did that do for you? Mm. Did you accept? Did you believe that he, the death of the Lord was to pacify God the Father for your sins to be cleansed. Do you ever believe in him? Because, you see, without Jesus' death, there, can be, there could have not been a judgment unto humanity. So, he says that the first judgment, he said, now is the judgment of this world. That's the first one. And the second thing, the second point is that now shall the prince of this world be cast out so he said that now shall Satan be cast into hell, fire. So first, the world will be judged. Two, the, mm. Satan will be arrested after the death of Jesus, after the blood has been shed. Now, Satan wouldn't have access to go back to, to, to the things that he was before. He will lose his power. Because you have to remember, when Adam lost it, when Adam lost it, all the power was given to Satan. So now the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, has to come and die to restore unto us the power that was once given unto humanity for our rights to be saved and to make it unto God. So that's what the Bible called Jesus, the, medi the mediator between man mm. and God, mm. or the mediator between humanity and divinity. So Jesus' death was to bring us together to God. 
So he says that with this death that I'm going to endure, it's going to cause the world, the ones who will deny me and who will not believe me, to be judged. And this is the, my, the, the, the same thing that is going to cause Lucifer to be cast to hell fire. And then he said 32, and, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Here he's talking about, if I be lifted up, meaning that, let me add a 33 to it so that it, it will explain it. This, this he said, signifying what death he should die. So he said that if I be lifted up, he's talking about if I be crucified, it's my death that is going to cause the world to come mm. and believe. It is my death. It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ that is going to cause people to believe in God. Yeah. That God truly exists and Jesus is the Son of God. Mm. Jesus is not just a prophet. He's, mm. he's, a, he's more than a prophet. He is the chosen Son of God. He is the captain of our salvation. He is the Prince of Peace, Amen. everlasting Father. The ones whose rulership will never come to an end. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is everything mm. in all. He is the Son of God. He is your Messiah, mm. your Savior. So that's why he says that when, when he has been crucified, all men, everyone that allows or that has been given by God to be saved will be drawn by the act on the cross, by the sacrifice of the cross, it will draw everybody that has been directed towards Jesus to come to God the Father. Amen. Verse 34, the people answered him, we have heard out the law, we have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this? son of man so the crowd was obviously confused they have heard that out of the law that christ abideth forever or christ will live forever yes. so how is how is it that he is saying that he the died. son of man must be lifted up or that he will eventually that the son of man will eventually die mm -hmm. and then they ask who is the son of man mm -hmm. So they are not still 100% sure, sure that Jesus is the Son of Man, mm. that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. 35 says that, Then Jesus saith unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have light. Lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. While ye have the light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. This is, this is a powerful statement made by Jesus Christ. He's saying that, he says that yet a little while is the light, and he's talking mm -hmm. about he is the light of the world. He says that I'm the light. Anyone that is in me will have this light. And the light is what is going to show you the path. Now, if you are walking in darkness, it says you don't see what is before you. You will fall into anything or you will fall for anything. If somebody is calling you from a dark angle, a dark place, you, there, it's just a voice you are hearing. You don't see the structure of the person. You might just go and you find yourself into trouble. But he says that if you are in the light, then you will see well. Because he is the light of the world. And he says that continue in the light and believe in the light so that you will be classified or called a child, child of the light. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Um, continuing verse 36. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. So it's Jesus is saying that as soon as he said these things, he quickly went, left and hid himself from them because mm -hmm. he knew that the questions would be too much, too many, that they, they still didn't grasp. Mm. exactly what he meant or who he was mm. even though he had done so many imagine doing so many miracles raising people from the dead you've explained yourself over and over again of who you are and who sent you mm. but yet all these signs and wonders and the people still do mm. not believe they're still doubting they still have so many questions mm. and 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 it's it is it's it, it is it is unbelievable but we have to also take ourselves back into that time yeah if you were in that time mm. would you straight away believe what jesus is saying 
Or mm. will you also question knowing his background, knowing who his physical mother and yeah. father were? Would you readily believe that he is the son of God? So it just shows that that belief is just by grace from God. Yeah. It is God who gives you that belief. Because if we were back then, maybe we wouldn't would believe too. We would have been the same position, unbelieving, unless God picks us, unless God chooses us to actually believe. And then we can have that belief. Mm. It is not an easy thing. Wow. So 38 says that, that the saying of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who have believed our report? And to whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed? Now, this is a wonderful verse from Isaiah. And it's, the writer is saying that he, he chipped this one in, that the people seeing all these miracles, yet still didn't believe that mm. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Now, and this is to fulfill the prophecy by Isaiah, which was once said that in Isaiah chapter, chapter 50, 53, it says that who has believed our report. That means, mm. like we ministering right now, we preaching, teaching all these messages. Who has believed? There are some people who have believed, some people have not believed. So Isaiah said it once, once upon a time mm. that these people don't believe that what God tells me to tell them. Because they have not also seen the arm. The arm here means that the works of God. Who has believed in our report? Who has believed? Mm. Who Unto whom has the arm Mm. The arm of the God Lord. be revealed to the things of God. You know, two people can be sitting at the same place and God can act. There can be a, a powerful supernatural event, something that will happen and this is caused by God. But one will believe that this is the act of God and some, the other one will say this is natural. It's just a coincidence. So, as I said, that who has believed in our reports, who has believed in our statements, who has believed in the things that we've seen secretly, the power of God that is being demonstrated in our life, these people that we are ministering to, who of them has believed? So he's saying that just to fulfill what Isaiah said in the old books, that, Lord, who has believed our reports? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? You see, if God don't reveal his acts, acts, deeds, doings, mm -hmm. movements, miracles, supernatural, if God don't reveal it to do that, I'm the one behind mm. it. You will not believe. Do you know that the world is so mm. far gone aside that they even think the sun rising by itself, <laughs> rises up by itself, the moon comes on itself, wind blows by itself, everything is, is by, by itself. All the Big Bang history and all the Big Bang theology and the ideology. It's, it is all this is, is spiritual blindness. That we don't want to give the glory to God, but we want to give it to nature. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So this is what Isaiah is saying, that if God don't reveal this thing to you, that mm. I am the one doing it, you, you will continue to believe the way you are believing. And we will not blame you for it, because unto you, this understanding has not been given unto you mm. by God. So what you believe is what you believe, and you continue to believe mm. it. But that, that, that shows you a sign that you need to know that you have not been given the grace to believe in the mm. most high God. Yes. Verse 39. Mm. Therefore they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, verse 40, mm. he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts and be converted and I should heal them. Mm. So here is here is Isaiah again prophesying mm. that he hath blinded their eyes, mm. that God has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, mm. that they should not see that Jesus is the Christ, mm -hmm. and they should not understand with their hearts that their hearts should be hardened. And, and, and then Isaiah also says they sh will not be converted, meaning that they will not be born again. Mm. And then goes on to say that I... I is God, mm -hmm. and God will heal them. Mm -hmm. So God will eventually turn around their unbelief mm -hmm. to belief. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this just shows the power and the might of God, that even faith is just by the hand of God. It's just by the grace of God. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's, it's just miraculous, yeah. you know. Some people, uh, they're living their lives, and they, 
they are so so against everything as soon as you mention god mm. it's like their heart is so hardened towards mm. it but god is saying that he will heal them so everybody has their time mm. you know your time may not have come but your time will come when jesus will reveal himself to you and show you that yes mm. he is really the christ so 41 said that these things Isaiah saith when he saw his glory and spoke of him. 42. Nevertheless, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did mm -hmm. not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. <laughs> so now he's saying that the things that Isaiah saw, those are the things that he has he has mm. told us one. Mm. Two things, two points, you remember. Who, who, who has believed in our report? Who has the hand of God been revealed to the works of God been made mm. and that's to made manifest in your life? Mm. And the next thing he said that people who don't believe in God right now, it looks like God himself has blinded them, keep them like that in, a row, in their own ignorance. Mm. And they think they are running their own life. Somebody said, that, I, 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 I'm happy I don't believe in God. I want to be free. And I always say that nobody is living a free life. If you are not a servant of God, you are a servant of the other servant. If you are not a servant of God, then you are a servant of the other servant who used to be a servant to God. <laughs> so so everybody is serving somebody. You you might be serving the God of money, the God of fame, the God of gain, the God of this, the God of that, the God of lust, the God of flesh, the God of the world. Mm. And you can be serving that one or you can be serving the creator of your soul. So here he makes it clear that the rulers, some... And when you talk about some also be, did believe, he's talking about Nicodemus and others. That's not all of yeah. them the Bible made clear to us, but some of them do believe. Mm. But because there was a statement, there's a, there, there, there was this uh, announcement or proclamation that anyone that believes or mentions Jesus' name mm. amongst the, the Pharisees or scribes or the Sahindrin, these people are not welcome. So if Nicodemus to open his mouth openly uh, and open his mouth and to proclaim that Jesus is Christ, he will lose his position. No, and, you know, he, he cherishes his position uh, more than the relationship with Jesus Christ. So mm. I, I know God understands his, his, his ways. We are not, I'm not judging him. We have every right to judge him because he's dead and he's gone. He's been judged already and he has his position over there. But, mm. but the issue here is that do not compromise your relationship with God. Mm. Do not compromise. Do not say that, you know, you know, God will understand. No, do not compromise. Take a stand all the time for God. Amen. Amen. Verse 43. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God, mm -hmm. which is much, much typical to the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. They want the crowds to shout their names, mm. to hail them as kings, even though they may be walking in sin, mm. because God will not be backing them. But that is the least of their concerns. Mm. What they need is the support yeah. of the crowd, the support of the population, wow. is popularity. That is yeah. that is that is their main goal and their main mm. mission it, is popularity. It's amazing. I mean, this this is a, some is something that it worries uh, it, it worries mo almost everybody on this planet. It worries even us sometimes, mm. men of God, uh, children of God, everybody want to be popular, um, you know, in a certain way. You want to be popular amongst your friends, popular amongst men of God, popular amongst Christians. Everybody wants to, to have this human praise. You know how you feel when your boss comes to work and say, good job. You know, that is a man's praise. Mm. You, know, uh, you know how you feel when your, your husband or your wife tells you, oh, honey, I love you. And I, I'll forever be with you. And this is also human praise. But you, you know how we mm. feel good about it. We mm. feel good. And this is something that the whole world is craving for. You know how you feel when you go and buy a new shoe. And you know a friend who has spoken about this shoe or spoken about certain clothes or something. When you buy it, you have this friend in your mind that, oh, I know when I buy this thing, when I wear it in front of this, my friend, I'm going to get human praise. So he's talking about we we human. This Pharisees wants they cherish human praise more than God's praise. When when we do certain things for God, 
And you know, actually, God comes to your room and tells you that, you know, I love you. Mm. You know, I love you. I'm always with you. We don't cherish mm. the praise that God gives us. Mm. We don't cherish that one more. But if a man or a woman to tell you that, you know, I love you. You are the best person. Oh, man, I like the way you look. I like the way you do things. You know, that one we believe the more. Mm. But we don't believe when God gives us the praise. And here he's also talking about that the praise to do things that will glorify God. But we want to do things that will, 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 men will glorify us. But we don't, we don't want to do things that will cause God to glorify us, to say, oh, well done, my servant. Well done, my son. We don't want that. We don't want, we don't care whether God is satisfied or not. We want to do what we can get human praise from. And that was what he was saying. 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believe on me, believe not on me, but on him that sent me. So Jesus was saying, he cried out in the midst of this whole argument that is mm. going on. And he said that he that believes on me doesn't only believe me alone. And at this time, I believe Nicodemus is around. Mm. I believe the other Pharisees who believe in Jesus, in Jesus Christ, yeah. they are also around. Mm. So Jesus now is trying to make it clear to them that, listen, you are not only believing in me, but you are also believing in God, God the Father. Yeah. Now you are a Pharisee and you are representing God on here. Mm. Jesus said, told the disciples that, listen to the Pharisees because they represent Moses. They are in the seat of Moses. And Moses is representing a servant who had a relationship with God. So now if you are in the seat of Moses, then that means you are also directly dealing with God. Mm. So now if you are a Pharisee and you are dealing with God, uh, then you should know that you are you believing in me is not only me you are believing in, but you are also believing in the God of Moses. Mm. Mm. So Jesus has to turn it like that because he knows that the Pharisees who believed in him we're, we're following the other Pharisees, but uh, we, we're, not we're not dare to turn and mm. to look at Jesus Christ with a smile on their face mm. because lest they will lose their position. Mm. So they are just trying to be very diplomatic, following and saying, yeah, we know we, know we cannot, uh, we don't believe in Jesus, but in their hearts, they do believe. They do believe, yes. 45. 45. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me, 46, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. So Jesus is further, further, further explaining that mm. if you see him, you don't really see him, but you are seeing him who sent him, which mm. is God. You are seeing God mm. and he has come as a light into this world mm. that whosoever believeth on him should not abide in darkness. Whosoever believes that he is the Christ that he was sent from God should have everlasting life. When you believe in him, automatically all the darkness is removed from your life and you have everlasting life. You have the light of him. You have the ministry of him within you. And from then you can start to act and start to walk in the power that Jesus used to walk on this earth. And that is what Christians need today, mm. is to walk in the power that Jesus used to walk in those many, many, many years ago because this is an era of signs and wonders. And he, all these miracles that Jesus is performing by walking in Christ and knowing who he is today, it even says that we, when he leaves, we should be able to do much more than mm. he did while he was on earth. Mm. So we should be able to do many more miracles than Jesus did, many more breakthroughs, many more deliverances. We just have to have the faith. We just have to have the faith that, yes, we can do it, you know, just by accepting who he is, accepting his ministry, and by, by attributing all the things that he did, and by confessing it, you know, if, if you have a deep relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, then you ask for that anointing, you ask for that power, I'm telling you, God is going to give it to you. So if you're a man of God out there, if you're a man of God, if you're a woman of God, Whatever your standing is with Christ, just know that you can also have the power to pull thousands and millions into light. Amen. That's powerful. 47. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Can you imagine? This is a beautiful statement. Jesus said that. Now, if you don't believe my words... 
I'm not judging you. Jesus is making it clear that I'm not judging you at this moment if you don't believe. Mm. But I have come to save the world. He said, if you don't believe, I judge you not. For I came not to judge the world. So he said, I'm not judging you because you don't believe me. Because Jesus is trying to say that I know it is not easy for you to understand that I am the Christ. Mm. But now here the 40, 48, but there's the 48 that will make sense right now. He said that he that received, rejected me mm. and received not my words, he uh, have one that judgeth him. Mm. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him mm. in the last days. So this is what he's saying, that if Jesus say that, that those days, he said that when I spoke these words and you don't believe, I'm not judging. I, Jesus, I'm not judging you because I didn't come to judge the world. But then in the 48, he said that, that the one that rejects me, one, you reject mm. Jesus, and receive not my words, have one that judgeth him. He said, the word that I have spoken, the same judge him mm. in the last day. So this is what he's trying to say. What he's trying to say is that he doesn't judge you, but the words that he has spoken, that is the word that will judge you. So this is what is going to happen. On the judgment day, Let's, let's take uh, somebody who you were about, to, you were going to do something that was evil. And then it says that the words of Jesus Christ will come to your ears. Mm. Don't do it. And then you neglected, he said you rejected the word. Mm. Now, that word that you heard before you committed that sin, that word is the word that will come up on the day of judgment. Mm. That you remember that before you stole that friend's mobile phone or you took that thing, a word came to you, don't take it. So that word will be played back on the judgment day. I, ne I needed to get this because this is very powerful. And it says that that word that came to your conscience, that is the thing that will be causing your judgment on that day. So one word will come up. I told you not to do this and you did it on this day. That's one word. Another word will come up. And the day I told you to forgive this person, and you say you will not forgive the person. Another word will come up. So mm. these are the things that will be judging us. So Jesus said that I came to bring the word. If you don't believe in the if you don't believe in me, fine. But remember, the words that I've spoken is so powerful that the words are the same thing that is going to judge you on the judgment day, on the last day. It is actually the words, the words mm. that we hear. The words that we feel, yeah. the words that comes to the heart, sh should I let it go or should I hold on? These are the things that are going to judge us. Mm. 49 says, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. So he's saying that these words that are judging you are mm. not coming that from me. That are going me. to be judging you. These words that are going to be judging you are yeah. not coming from me, yeah. but they are coming from God. Yeah. So it has, they have the authority and they have the power to judge you on that final mm. day. So you should, you should take heed to what I'm saying because what's, what's, what these words are saying is something you should, you should listen to, you should grasp, you should hold on to, and you should, you should acknowledge also that these words are from God. And if they're from God, they're everlasting and they are all powerful because by then he knew that they are not really accepting who he is mm -hmm. but by him attributing those words to God that they might ev actually say that yes it is actually coming from God and believe him even more mm. exactly so th that that is what he's saying so the 50 says that and I know that his judgment is life and I know that his judgment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So Jesus is now saying mm. that what he was saying, as, as, what, as my wife was saying, what God tells him is what he tells the world. Mm. And those words that he tells the world, which we hear, these are the words that are going to judge us on the judgment mm. day. But one thing you, know, you need to know that there are two sorts of judgment. We have the present, which I call it the current judgment. And then we have the future judgment, which is the last day. There, there is a sin that when you commit today, you will, have, you will reap a judgment 
today, within these days. And then, and then if there's no repentance, you are going to reap another judgment, the final judgment, which is on the, on the judgment day, according to the books, which will declare where you are going to spend the rest of eternity. But now, if you choose to do certain things that are not right, you can see that your ways and your blessings will be blocked. And then you'll be living in hardship and difficulties and all kinds of things will be happening in your life. It is also a form of a judgment. We call it the present, the current judgment. So we are not only living our life thinking that, okay, let me, let me live in sin and when the, when the judgment day is getting close and I'll repent and then I'll be okay with God. No, 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 no. There is a current judgment and then there's a future judgment. Mm -hmm. And so when we do bad things, and if you do good things now, mm -hmm. there's a blessing that you will reap here mm -hmm. on the earth. And, and then if you, the final judgment comes to you, continue to make it to heaven. Amen. Yeah. But here he's saying that the things that my father has asked me to say, these are the things I speak, and, and, and it is true. Mm -hmm. Chapter 13, verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover... When Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. So, so here is Jesus talking about his, his disciples, that he loved his disciples unto the end. And he knew that it was that hour. He knew that it was the time when he would be crucified. And it is so powerful because despite all the everything he went through with his disciples, the Bible says he loved them unto, unto the, the end. end. Amen. Verse 2 says that, And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the hearts of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing, verse 3, Jesus knowing that mm. the Father have given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. So at this hour, the supper being ended, Jesus Christ, you know, he had the, the last supper, if you remember, mm. the last supper. The supper has just ended. Satan has put in the spirit of discord or the spirit of betrayal into the heart of Judas Iscariot. And Judas has fled amongst the disciples and he's gone out trying to find ways and means to deceive or to betray Jesus Christ, mm. to get extra money for himself, and then to mislead the mm. Pharisees. Because he knew the Pharisees wanted Judas so badly, that they wanted Jesus so badly, that they, don't, they, they are willing to pay, mm. to offer some, some amount of money for anyone that will be able to deliver or to show where Jesus hides with the disciples. Because Jesus now knew that his time was close to die. So he was, try, he was spending more, more time with the disciples indoors. Trying to tell them everything that they need to know. To guide them on the journey set mm -hmm. ahead of them. So at these days, you don't see Jesus Christ a lot in town. Like before. As these days were the days that he was trying to teach, impact more wisdom into them. Some other accounts will chip in here and say that Jesus said, I have so much to tell you, but you cannot bear. Mm. It's too much for you now. Mm. But you, when I die and, and I go to the Father, the Father will send the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit comes, the Spirit is going to tell you, oh, uh, teach you everything. So at this moment, Jesus is really teaching them what they need to know, how they are going to live their life. Even if he has the time, he could have even t tell them, each and every one of them, mm. how they were going to die. Uh, yeah. He told Peter how he's going to die, and that one we will get it at the end of this whole book. But then Jesus, knowing that all power has been given unto him by the Father, and that he came from the Father, and he will go back to the Father, he was about to act in a very different way, in a very powerful way, which my wife is going to take it. Verse 4, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Verse 5, mm. after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Mm. 
And here is his, I can call it his last act of love to his disciples to actually wash their feet. And in those days, if you wash somebody's feet, it means that you are a slave to that person. Mm. The person is your master. Mm. And so here is Jesus taking on the position of a slave, mm. bending down, prostrating himself to his disciples and washing mm. their feet and drying their feet. His last act of love for them, his last physical act of love for mm. them because the most, uh, the most powerful act, the spiritual act, was his crucifixion mm. for, for all of mankind. Mm -hmm. But here he is just telling his disciples, just, he didn't say it, he didn't say it verbally, mm. but he was telling them through showing his actions, them. he was showing them, yes, that I love you very much, and, mm. and as I wash your feet, may you, may you stand for righteousness, mm. may you stand for purity, may you stand for everything that I stood for. May you mm. walk in my shoes, basically. Yeah. So that's why even the Lord commanded us on every Saturday, we have feet wash at our place mm. where people come. Even we wash even children's feet mm. because it is very important. Now, just taking your children to school and, and there's no guarantee that you can come back and pick them up alive. Mm. Anything can happen. So the Lord commanded us to be washing the feet of all the people that comes on Saturday. So, and then recently added the feet wash and then even the face wash. Can you imagine? Because mm. there are a lot of people that are blinded spiritually and the spiritual face washing, it helps you, those, especially those of you who go to bed, you wake up in the morning, you know you had a dream, but you cannot recollect your dreams. And it's all spiritual blindness. Your body is saying something, but your brains are in connect with your body. And you know there's a message that has been given to your body and to you but you cannot recollect what it is and you don't know that message can be all that you are waiting for for a turnaround so that's why you need to come to action chapel on, 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 on the saturday and have your feet washed and have your face washed and you mm -hmm. see what god will do i mean the testimonies are so many and we all know that god is there is there Amen. yes yes so yes. at this moment i like the act of jesus christ mm. he first of all took his garment mm. his his garment we mean that his clothes and he threw it down mm. to the side mm. and the disciples by this time will be wondering what is it doing mm. and he takes a towel and first so so and he girded himself that means around his waist he just covers his waist with a towel mm. and now he, he just collects a basin a bucket mm place water, fetch water. He did it all by himself. He didn't send anybody to do mm. it. And collected their feet one by one mm. and start washing their feet. Let's see what happens. Six. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. And Peter saith unto him, Lord, doth thou wash my feet? Seven. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now. But thou shalt know hereafter. Mm. Now, Peter, it's amazing. Mm. Jesus went around washing the disciples' feet. Everybody was okay. They were like, I know they were a little bit like, what is he doing? But they, nobody dares to ask Jesus, Sir, what are you doing? No, nobody could. But then when it came to Peter's turn, Peter was like, no way. I'm not going to let you wash my feet. Even though these guys have made you wash their, their feet, I respect you so much. I love you so much. I will not let you wash my feet. And Jesus said, listen, guy, what I'm doing now, you don't have any idea of what I'm doing. But you will understand hereafter. Mm. Mm. You are going to understand this thing afterwards. Because, you see, the problem with Peter is he was the oldest amongst them. Now, but the issue here is that Peter had issues with elder and then, you know, this age mm -hmm. stuff. And Jesus was trying to break the age thing, the age thing, because I'm older than you, mm. I should rule over you, and this. And, and Jesus was trying to break that, that it doesn't matter anymore. And uh, now a, a grown-up can relate to a young person, and then a young person can relate to an old person. So Jesus was trying to break that, that curse of them, or especially of Peter. Now Peter says that I will not allow you, but Jesus says that you don't know, but you understand it hereafter. Mm. And then verse 8. Let me add the verse 8 to you. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Can, can you imagine? He said, you will never wash my feet. I will never let you wash my feet. Mm. <laughs> Very powerful and aggressive. And I, I, I wish I could just call Peter and ask him, what is your issue? 
But hear what Jesus told him. Jesus answered him, If I mm. wash thee not, thou has no part with me. He said, Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, <laughs> if you don't let me wash your feet, eh, Peter, you are no more my disciple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just to wash the feet. He said, you are, I, I told you you are, the, you are the head, you are the leader, you are the stone, and upon you I will build my church. My church but yeah. if you don't allow me to wash your feet, eh, yeah. you cannot be my disciple. Mm. From today, you, you, you resign. Mm. You resign your position. Mm. <laughs> and Peter was shocked. Because I don't think he knew that... That, that this thing was going to be so serious that if I don't allow Jesus to wash my feet, I can lose my position. Mm. And, and this tells me that Jesus was illustrating this, the, the act of humility that you, wherever you are going, as my disciple, you must humble yourself, wash people's mm. feet, do this thing. That is why you shouldn't miss Saturdays at action. Because if you will not allow your feet to be washed, you will not have a part with Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse number nine, Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So here he has deeply repented. He has repented. Do he not only, I want to be completely a part of you. So yeah. don't only wash my feet. But bath me. But bath, bath my whole body. <laughs> bath everything so I can be 100% yours. Amen. I, I, I love Peter because he can be... I don't know how to put it, but he stands for this generation, this modern generation, where we think we know, mm -hmm. and then God speaks to us, and then later we realize that we, we don't know, mm. and, and, and then we, we come back to God and say, God, please, sorry, I, I didn't know. Peter, when he, realized that, when he realized that Jesus said, listen, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me, then he realized, I said, Jesus, now let me be honest with you, my feet is not my only problem, but my problem is my head. <laughs> is what goes on in my mind that is my problem. What happens to my hands is mm. saying that Jesus, my head has problems. Mm. You see, the thinking comes, I have issues here. What goes into my mind is what I give the signal to my hand and to my feet. So Jesus actually deal with my head mm. so that my feet will not take me to problem places. So that my hands will not do bad things. So he requested that not my feet only, but, my, but also my hands and my head. That's what the guy said. My head is my issue. Wash my hands also and then wash my head. Because if my head, if my mind is cleansed, then my feet will do good things. Mm. My hands will do good things. Mm. So he, he really broke down this, this thing for Jesus, that Jesus actually start from the head. Because if my feet is clean, if my head is not clean, I will still walk into the wrong places. Mm. I will still use my hands to do bad things. So clean my mind. At this moment, I pray that may God cleanse your mind. Amen. May everything, the bad thoughts that come to your mind, may it be cleansed. Mm. Remember this thing. Jesus. This is one key you need to take from this program today. Never let any thoughts that is bad rest in your mind more than a second. Because if anything that the mind, it develops things. Anything that comes, any idea that comes to your mind is going to expand. It's going to grow. And it will go into your heart. And when it goes into your heart, then your heart will pump it into your legs, into your arms. And then you will work. If a good idea comes to your mind, and it's a good idea, you allow it to rest in your mind, it will pump the good idea, the good thought into your heart. And your heart will give instruction to your hands and your feet to go and do it. Mm -hmm. But now if it is a bad idea and it comes to your mind, the bad idea will grow, overtake your mind, send the bad signal to your heart, and then your heart will give the signal to the hands and your feet will go and do it. So this is very important that we guide our mind. That just in our program, we were having this week program uh, at church. Mm. God spoke very powerfully that to somebody that you must guide your mind. Because if you are able to defeat the enemy 
in your mind, you defeat him in your life. Because if you don't defeat the enemy in the mind, you can defeat him in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm. So it's very important that you watch what rest, watch the things you meditate upon. Upon, yeah. Because it's the meditation that that shows who you who you are going to become. Mm. What you are going to become is is the evidence of the things that you've been meditating upon. So we are going to dive into prayer. Father Lord Jesus, we Amen. thank you for this successful program. We thank you for your presence and the lives that you have touched. Amen. We are praying that you touch every mind out there. Amen. We touch every mind, every thought in their imagination, Lord Jesus, mm. that it be pure and holy, Father. Mm. We come against those spirits that speak evil to them, that speak suicide to them, that speak unbelief to them, Lord Jesus. Let your power rest upon your children. Let your love rest upon your children. We've seen how you, you've suffered so much for us, Lord Jesus. Mm. So we are praying, Lord Jesus, that you pour, continually pour your love. Just as you wash the feet of the disciples, we are praying that you go into everybody's house and also wash their feet, Lord Jesus. Mm. Show them your love, Lord Jesus. Show them that you are still in their life and you are still going to do wonderful miracles in their lives. Let them feel you at this hour, Lord Jesus. Let them feel your anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I mm. thank you. I pray for somebody you are watching and you have a mental problem. You have a strong mental problem. And we pray right now that instantly this e demon will leave your mind. Mm -hmm. You are actually going to open your mouth and this spirit will come out. I pray that may God touch your mind. There was somebody you are also watching, but the, 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 there's this addiction thing. You are, you are, you are a gambler. You, you gamble. You play like blackjack. You play like roulette. You are addicted. Mm. You are addicted. You are... A, very addicted to you gambled everything every you you your pay your work everything everything you work hard for you just, just gamble mm. it he's a demon and I, I i pray that today you are set free amen. that you are not going to go back into those things again amen in the mighty name of jesus amen. somebody today are a lot of bad pictures that comes in your mind you know evil pictures sexual pictures and this moment i pray for cleansing that your brain will be cleansed because that is that thing is destroying your health and it has caused right now that there's these symptoms. You are feeling like you are having this stroke syndromes, stroke. That like half of your body doesn't really. Sometimes once in a while, your your one eye will blink off where you ha you don't have control. Right? Sometimes your hand will be going up a little bit. And these are all signs that you are losing control over your body, and you've opened gates for the enemy. To come in and to destroy your temple so at this moment i pray that may those demons leave your mind and leave your heart that god will restore unto you the joy of his salvation that you'll be blessed beyond measure may your brains be washed may your heart be washed every heart problem cancer see cancer in somebody's heart i pray that this cancer let it be gone in the mighty name of jesus jesus who loves you is touching your heart and is commanding this cancer to leave your heart in the name of Jesus. I pray that may the good Lord himself help you. Arthritis. What is that? Arthritis. Mm, I hear this. Mm, uh, God mm. is saying that somebody, you are being healed of arthritis. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus that you are set free. You are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody, you have feet swollen. Your feet are swollen. You are an elderly lady and you are watching. And God is saying that there's healing. At this moment, as we, I'm even praying, there's heat going through your, your feet. And that is the cleansing power of the Lord. Receive that cleansing anointing. Receive that cleansing power right now. Your feet is being healed. Your feet is being healed. Lord, I thank you for the lives that you have, you have just healed. I thank you. Mm, I thank you. Thank I thank you. Thank you. Stomach thank you, ulcer again. The Lord is healing you right Thank now. Jesus. Every stomach ulcer be gone out of the body of the people of God. I thank you, Jesus, for what you've done mm. and your blessings. We thank you for the spirit of humility. We thank you for the spirit of the blessings mm. of the living God that has come upon your life. I saw. I just saw a child. He's lying mm. in a, a machine, and there's this tube. Mm. It's like a, a tube through the nose. 
I pray that may God right now mm. heal that child, mm. that the child himself will pull that thing out and begin to walk. Mm. Begin to walk. Because I hear, I hear mm. the nerves, nerves issue. The child has nerves issue and the nerves are not, has, has been destroyed. So now the child is paralyzed. But right now strength is coming into the child. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. So may healing come upon that child. Thank you, May Jesus. healing come upon that home. Thank After you, all Jesus. these prayers, I want you to believe mm. the moment you feel the healing of God, mm. quickly write to us, Facebook us, call us. Mm. Let us have this testimony and rejoice with you. Amen. It is necessary. Mm. There are people who don't believe there is God. And when they see that God is doing these things in the lives of people, mm. it will compel them not to go to hell, but they can also enjoy the same mm. miraculous touch that you have just received. And they can believe in Jesus Christ. And they can also make it to heaven. Because people want to see before they believe. Mm. So speak on. And God will bless you. Amen. My wife is going to invite you to church. And don't miss it. Come. You're most welcome to Action Chapel. Mm. We fellowship at Rolf Scarton Sexton on Sundays at 12 o'clock. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have prophetic service, prayer, and healing. It's a powerful service. These services are always packed with people who are eager and hungry for the touch of God. So we are inviting you to come and join them and to experience the blessings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Also, Saturdays, as my apostle mentioned earlier, Saturdays at 9 a.m., we have feet washing service. So come and have your feet washed and a divine implantation put within you by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And whenever you see this in town, it is a flyer for our Action Chapel. You, should, you can take it and you can see us over here. And uh, you have the timetable on it and you'll be blessed. After this uh, segment, you will have uh, the opportunity if you also want to support the TV broadcast. There's going to be some numbers there. And you can send your do donation to this account to keep us on air. Um, if you really like this program and you don't want it to stop and you believe that this is something good that is helping your family and is helping you, then you is, is worth supporting it. So we are going to put the numbers at the end of it and then God will show you how you should support us. If you support it, God will support you. Amen. If you bless it, God will bless you. Amen. So respect God and God will respect you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are blessed. God bless Amen. you. We love you. See you next time. Amen.